Hi, let's talk about artificial sweeteners today. I feel like those are in everything. When you read a label and it says low sugar or reduced sugar or no added sugar, if you read the label, a lot of things times you'll see um, sucralose, Splenda, there's a, a lot of different names for these artificial sweeteners, but that's what you will find listed in these ingredients. And my question is, are those any better for you than what they're trying to pre prevent. So I, I think no, and I have a few reasons for that. So let's start with um, what, what's in these <laughs> um, sweeteners. There, there are six that I wanna focus on. These are probably the six most common. Aspartame, sucralose, Splenda, NutraSweet, um, saccharin, and acylfame, potassium K, which is also known as ACE K. Um, those are kind of the big six, and um, there are some articles out that talk about the health problems that these can create, and they have actually been shown to um, increase the adverse adverse effects um, such as cancer, weight gain, metabolic disorders, type two diabetes, and alteration of your gut microbiota activity, which is a fancy way to say that it disrupts your digestive environment or your gut health. And gut health is foundational to everything, so that is actually a pretty big deal. So those are um, the top six, and if you want to see these, um, this article for yourself and read about it, I've put all the references in my blog blog post. So that's drjenny.com slash blog has all the references to these articles. But that's just the, you know, the essence of it is there's all those things that are linked to those top six most common um, artificial sweeteners. So my question is, if you were thinking you were avoiding things like type 2 diabetes, and then you're turning around and using an artificial sweetener that has been shown to be cause an increase in type 2 diabetes, what, what's the point of that? The other thing, too, that I find ironic is that these sweeteners, that the, these top six that I just mentioned, in, in so many cases, they are shown to actually create more of an insulin issue than you would think. So a lot of people think that, okay, I'm not going to consume sugar. I'll use the low sugar alternative. I'll use these artificial sweeteners because I don't want that insulin spike, and that is you know, the mechanism that causes health problems and the, the diabetes and stuff like this. But what we're actually seeing, and again, I have another study um, that shows this, and this is the Journal of Public Health and Nutrition, and they are showing that the insulin response with artificial sweeteners is actually worse than it is with sugar. So... You, you think you're using these substances so you can break that sugar addiction and that sugar habit, but it's causing the same, if not an even greater insulin issue in your body where your insulin spikes in response to this substance. So the, the very thing, again, the very thing that we're trying to prevent is actually being um, made worse by these uh, artificial sweeteners. So th these are in everything. If you look at... I've seen them in like fruit cups that are geared for kids, like those little mandarin orange cups or something like that. Um, sports drinks, fruit drinks, fruit snacks, even bread. Um, you just have to read the label because they, they seem to be in everything. And if you look at it, you think, oh, well, there's less added sugar, so that's got to be better for me. But just remember what we said. Those things are doing exactly what you're trying to get away from in a, in a lot of cases. So it's my thought that we are just better off by not using artificial sweetener products. So what does that look like? What what do we do instead? I think the, the first thing to keep in mind is that when you are trying to get away from this addiction that most of us have to sugar, this overconsumption of sugar, we really do have to eat less of it. And I am totally aware that that is very oversimplified, but it is a really simple principle. Um, it's called the glucose insulin pump idea that the more sugar you eat, the more you want, the more you crave, but it works in reverse too. So the less that you eat and you consume, the less you will 
crave and, and desire to consume. So it, it's really important to just think of ways that we can phase sugar out of our diet as much as we can. And I think a, a really good way to do that is the less processed food we eat, the less sugar we will consume. So by filling our diets with things like healthy meat, grass-fed, pastured, free-range, meat that is raised with integrity, the, the way that God intended us to have meat. It, it's pastured, it's free-range, it's not eating a bunch of commercial grain that's pumped full of antibiotics and growth hormones and all that kind of stuff. So cultivate relationships with local farmers and um, meat companies that grow and produce meat the, the way that you know that it should be done. Um, that, um, a focus on healthy fats, things like nuts, avocado, coconut um, products, seeds, um, th those types of things that, even butter, it, butter, I feel like it gets a, a bad rap, but eating that on your vegetables and, and using that in your cooking, it's a healthy fat. Um, so, so those kinds of oils and seeds and nuts and coconut products, avocados, healthy fats, um, lots of vegetables, five to 10 servings of vegetables a day. And what you'll find is those will fill you up. There's not a whole lot of, if you focus on healthy meat, healthy fat, lots of vegetables, and just a little sprinkling of fruit as your sweetness, um, if you will, throughout the day, just a little bit, a couple strawberries, a little bit of blueberries, the lower sugar things, an apple um, cut up with some uh, almond butter on it or, or something like that. Those things, if you do all that, there's not a lot of room for a lot of processed stuff like that. So try to fill up on those kinds of things and just make sure that you're getting enough fat in your diet. We'll, we'll circle back to fat because I feel like, um, thankfully, I think the low fat diet um, and its wisdom is on the way out. But I think that was one of the most seriously detrimental um, pieces of diet advice we have ever seen. Because when you eat a lot of, um, when you cut back on fat, you have to eat a lot of something else, right? If you have fat, protein, and carbohydrate as your three choices and you cut um, fat, you're left with protein and carbohydrate. We can only consume so much protein until you tax your kidneys, and that becomes just self-limiting. So some people, like especially bodybuilders, they, they will push that limit, but it's it's not a good thing. So if, you know, 20, 25% of your diet on a pretty high side is protein, then if you go low fat, what are you filling it up with? You're filling it up with carbohydrate. And carbohydrate usually looks like high sugar, high starch, processed foods that spike your glycemic index, high glycemic foods that spike your ins insulin levels and create all kinds of health problems. So you're really much better off when you focus on healthy fats, the right amount of protein, things like that. Fat also has a way of making you feel satisfied. So um, people on low fat diets very commonly say, I just never feel full, I never feel satisfied. So um, that is um, just my, my thoughts on how we, we get around that. And then just not not using those artificial sweetener products. I, I don't believe that the benefits outweigh the width outweigh the risks of using those products. So that's um, my opinion based on the the studies that I've um, talked about in those articles, but um, I, I think we're better off without them. What about um, things like honey and um, stevia? Stevia is an herb, not an artificial sweetener. So I do get this question um, quite commonly. Uh, what about stevia? Does it fall under the um, artificial sweetener umbrella? No, it's different. It, it doesn't raise your um, blood sugar levels the way that these artificial sweeteners do or the way that honey would. So I think in small amounts, things like uh, local honey or um, stevia are okay. I just, again, if, if what we're trying to do is create in our bodies this state where we're not always craving sweet 
then eating less of it is really the answer. So those things, a little bit of honey and a little bit of um, stevia, as long as you're overall generally healthy, I think they're fine. Now, if you've got a raging disease process going on, you, you might need to be a little more drastic and that's a completely separate issue. But um, by and large, I think, you know, having just a touch of honey or um, a little bit of stevia in things um, is, is, is not going to be a huge issue and is much better than pumping yourself full of sugar or um, artificial sweeteners. So anyway, I hope you found that helpful and um, you know we're all on this journey together. Ditching sugar and transitioning your eating is hard work and um, it's probably the hardest thing that I work with people to do when they're transforming their health, but it is absolutely worth it and it has such profound impacts on on your health. So um, I think it's worth worth undertaking. Thanks for listening and have a great day.